Hello, everyone. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast Podcast. And today I have the pleasure and honor to be talking with one of our longtime clients, Ed Curry. And I'm going to be asking Ed a lot of questions. Ed is a wonderful example of what can happen when somebody meets life enthusiast. But I also am really enthused at meeting Ed Curry because he is an example of a wonderful human. So, Ed, welcome to my world. No, thank you for all the kind words, Martin. Uh, uh, you as well. You've helped me so much. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I am a product of life enthusiast and your help. Absolutely. Great. So, Ed, um, I guess we should perhaps highlight of why we think it's a big deal that, that you know us. Ed, the way I remember it is we were introduced by one of our affiliates, when you were buying yourself a sauna and uh, with that came a prize which was half an hour with martin and that's exactly right martin yeah and uh, so uh, this goes back several years i don't know how many 10 and uh, not not that far but it's it's been a little while for sure yeah yeah well okay let's try to explain to people first of all I know that these days you're farming and you're probably the last or the best and only farmer who grows jalapeno for seed. Like probably, your, I, I think that your farm produces most of the seeds for the Northwest, both in the United States, North, Southwest, United States and Mexico's Northwest, right? Okay, so uh, Martin and to the listeners, kind of what I do is I... I, I'm a Mendelian type breeder. I learned genetics from Phil Villa, who is one of the best pepper geneticists that ever lived. We lost Phil uh, in 2013, of November 13th to be exact. I was with him when we lost him. And uh, uh, Phil, next to my father, had more influence in my life than any individual. Um, he was, uh, well, I should include my mother in there too, and my wife, I guess. But Phil was very influential in teaching me a trade. Um, Martin, I, I don't have a doctorate. I, I, I don't. Even, I have a high school degree, but I love life and I love to learn. And and that's where you've came into my life, is you're very similar in, in, in a quest to learn. And so that's how I learned genetics. I followed Phil around from the time I was in eighth grade, uh, approximately 1970. And uh, he would come back and forth to the farm uh, several times a year uh, during nearly all of those years. I started working with him as a young grower in 1979, and he set out to teach me and understand genetics, Martin. And and he he understood genetics. Phil hated being in the box. If you went to, if you, he he always told me, he said, "I chose you because you had an open spirit to learn, and you had not been tainted by any." books that that some university would teach me of a given style he said i'm going to take you and 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 shape you the way i want you and he did and and i was willing to learn and i can't tell you how many hours i talked to him on the phone martin hours i mean way back when <laughs> when we first got those old bag phones you remember the bag phones i would i i bought a, one of the first bag phones that come into this side of arizona to talk to phil and I would carry that thing in my vehicle, and 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 I could I could it usually had enough charge that I could walk in the chili a little bit, call Phil, describe to him what I was doing, what I was seeing, and then he would describe back to me. Literally, we'd talk two hours at a time. Well, that was my classroom, and I'm ex I love to tell this part, Martin. I'm extremely ADHD. For the parents out there that have ADHD kids, don't ever think they can't learn. They may not learn the way the average person does sitting in a desk. I can't sit still. To say, it's hard for me to sit still right now to talk to you very long. But Phil could teach me, and the, and the field was my classroom, the chili field. And once we had the cell phone, holy cow, I could look at the crop, I could explain to him. Then he would start explaining to me what I was seeing and what I was finding. And, and ironically, I've taught 
my David and Manuel, the guys that work with me, and now a couple of my sons are starting to learn. And I get to teach them the way Phil taught me. Do we pull out some genetic books? Absolutely. Do do I have do I get to rub shoulders with some pretty powerful genetics people? I do. But this all started because of a love, a passion. If you got a passion, man, you can do anything. Yeah. And uh, you no, know, I'm, I, I, um, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to, yeah, give me, give me a chance to put in now and then. <laughs> uh, uh, I wanted to punch out the word Mendelian because I doubt that many people remember from their chemistry or biology books who Mendel or Gregor Mendel was. Yeah, Gregor <laughs> Mendel. Yeah. Yeah, he he was actually uh, my countryman. He was a Moravian, just like myself. And uh, he 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 figured it out, and he taught how genetics works. And this is the opposite of genetically modified. This is the basis of natural selection, as directed by brains or by human inventiveness, right? Very much so. Basically, it's just, it's a very simple method of taking two parents, crossing them, watching the progeny, selecting from the progeny. There's no gene manipulation at all. It's strictly what God gives us in that cross. And it's fun to watch the crosses. Holy cow, Martin, that's the fun part. Uh, I'll give you, for instance, right now we have a chili that has more nutritional value than spinach with lutein's. Some people call it lutein's. The lutein's and the zeaxanthins are super high in this chili. We found it by accident. Now, most of your uh, plants produce hot chilies, right? Right. Well, no, 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 hold it. I, I was getting a phone call there and getting interrupted. The, okay, what I do, we became famous, Phil and I, if you will, in the chili world for breeding the heat out of pepper now we have some that's super hot if you were in the north or the east like you're in canada and and somebody said hey martin let's eat a chili relleno so you go to the store and you buy some chili and you get a really hot chili you're probably not gonna go buy that chili again because it's too hot it wasn't a fun experience well, we bred the heat to a more consistent level. And it take me, I mean, if I got into the nuts and bolts of that, it would take too long. But here's the bottom line. We gave a genetic variance range of, of approximately 200 scovels, up or down, if you see what I'm saying. Yeah. In other words... Okay, let's stop on this a little bit. So the scovel scale is uh, from zero to, what, 10,000? Yeah, well, no, actually, you know... Uh, have an arrow and stuff as high as 300,000 okay. uh, certain have arrows, but not all capsaicins are created equal. Uh, some are the, the, the way that the, the carbon links are connected makes a lot of difference. And I don't know if that's the, exactly the right terminology to call that, but that's what I always call it. The way that's connected, some, the anhydros and the dihydros, about 40% of the oil is water soluble. So when, when, when a pepper is canned through a processing facility and the water runs over it, that means about 40% of the capsaicin is gonna disappear in that water out the drain and you're gonna get the remaining 60%. But if we change how much is water soluble, how much of the anhydros and the dihydros are actually remain in that pepper, we can change change the heat of that pepper as well as martin i love to tell this for your listeners is some people you know you eat certain kind of chilies and it burns you in the front of the mouth you eat other kind of chilies that burns you at the back of the throat you eat other kind of pepper um, and let's get out of the term chili and let's go to jalapeno let's go to to you know serranos many other different kinds and every one of them have a little bit different way that they bite you here in the southwest and the northern Mexico, there is a there is a native pepper called chiltepin. Now the chiltepin is one of my favorite chilies, Martin. But it's about as big around as the end of my little finger here. They're all harvested by hand. There's there's a little mechanization going on, and, and I've got a friend doing a little work on that. Uh, but as, as a whole, they're hand harvested in the mountains of northern Mexico. 
they're wild. Now that flavor is unbelievable, but the heat is very refreshing. Okay. Now, now you're going to, all, all it, your friends from the North. As in ahead. not overpowering. Yeah. Yeah. Some people would think is extremely overpowering, but once you get acclimated to capsaicins, it's a very mild, it's, it's, it's hot, but it's very gentle in its approach. Whereas habanero and some others are not. We have a set of genes here in one particular chili we've been breeding on 25, 26 years that bite you aggressively and will hold on for 45 minutes to an hour. Now, and nobody you wants sweat, that. You sweat and sweat and run around and rub your tongue on the carpet? Yeah, <laughs> well said. You're sucking on a stick of butter, whatever you can find to cool off, and it doesn't cool off very well. And, and, and capsaicin is a wonderful product. Wonderful. Used in mace. Uh, there's some studies going on for local anesthesia now. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that capsaicin can do, not to, not to mention speed your metabolism up, yes. add flavor. I mean, it just the list goes, it's crazy yes. on capsaicin. But I, well, the one thing I love to say, and I love to teach this to everybody, Martin, is get this out. Not the, yes, the, the, habanero can be 300,000 scovels. You, you see what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean that it's the hottest. I've got some stuff that will probably scoville seven or eight thousand that will probably burn most people way worse than the three hundred thousand scoville habanero. If you see what I'm saying, yeah. it's all about how the carbon links are in the oil. It's an oil. Yeah, I okay? remember one of the conversations you and I had. You were speaking to some researcher from Texas who was feeling uh, a little cocky. And you, you said, don't, don't toy with this. This is going to whack you. Do you remember the story? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a good friend of mine. And, I'll, and, I'll uh, share it, it if it, you can. He, yeah, I'll share it. He's, he's a breeder. He's a great guy. I won't say his name, but he's a great guy. And, and he's a PhD there at Texas A&M. And, and he was out at the farm. And I said, you want to be careful. That, that particular line is very different. But he drove to El Paso. About 40 minutes out of El Paso, he called me. And El Paso is a little over three hours from here. And he was going to the airport. And he said, man, he said, I just really quit burning and got comfortable just a minute ago. And that was at least two and a half hours. And, and, and so how capsaicins work is very complicated. And, the mo you know, for a long time, uh, Kevin Crosby and Ben Villalone, both of Texas is A&M. Ben was known as Dr. Pepper, and then Kevin took over his work. And, and, and they're super great people. But the point is, is Ben got, you know, almost run off the, the map of, of, of doctors there in the, gosh, back in the 70s or 80s for developing this no-heat jalapeno. Everybody said, well, that's, I think they give him some, you know, crazy booby award type deal for it because it was dumb, you know. It turns out that Ben changed the world because once he had a sweet jalapeno, then Pace Picani sauce, who Mr. Pace himself, Glenn Pace was running it at that point in Texas, took that and he could actually add captured capsaicin, in other words, capsaicin all extracted, and add, and all of a sudden, we got a num numerical system for salsa. That's why when you go to the store, let's use Pace. Campbell's owns Pace now, Campbell's Soup. So you go to the, to the, to this grocery store, uh, and you buy a bottle of Picante. Well, you can look on there, and it'll say medium, mild, or hot, or yeah. extra hot. Yeah, one well, star, that's two all, star, and so on, right? Exactly. And, and the reason you can buy that, and it's consistent, is Dr. Ben's work. Uh -huh. It is because by giving a, a sweet jalapeno, it could have the jalapeno flavor, and then you could add the heat to an exact percentage and come up. It was ingenious. And yet, there was three or four years that everybody was making fun of him. Well, you wasted your time. No, he didn't. He changed the world. And <laughs> that takes me into to the vitamin content of chili. Chili jalapeno, they're super high in vitamin C, A, D. I mean, it just goes on and on. Not to mention the value of the capsaicin. So by him doing that was what made it possible that in about the mid-90s, 
ketchup was no longer the number one condiment on the shelf. After that, Martin, it became that it, it, that that salsa was. You know, Martin, I always like to talk about several things than pepper, but a pepper's a pepper's a pepper is just not true. And and the capsaicin, it, not all capsaicins are created equal. You know, and and I like to put that out so that people understand the health value of it. We um, we on this end. Uh, have discovered that sort of thing when we are manufacturing the exula superfoods. And you have some familiarity with that, is that these exulas, we actually test the ingredients that we're going to put in. And we don't test them in the sense of uh, sticking them into some kind of a uh, chemical analysis. We actually taste them. And as we're tasting them, we're evaluating whether they're going to have that kind of response in the human body that we want. And that, that's a whole lot like that uh, jalapeno story that you're giving, because the, um, the health effect has a lot to do with what's in the plant and the label doesn't tell the story, right? The label is just a label. It's sort of like, I was trying to explain to somebody the other day about almonds. They said, well, almond is an almond is an almond. I said, well, no, if you steam them or if you uh, flash freeze them or whatever, you kill them and they will never grow into a tree. They may look the same on the label, but they're not the same in the effect that they'll have on the human body. Well, once you start changing the enzyme, <clears throat> the enzymatic action is huge in our tummies. And you've helped teach me that, Martin. Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, when you there, when, when you change something by processing it, you know there's some challenges there. Not always, but in some cases, yes. Yeah. Some cases makes it better and safer. Some cases, like an almond, an almond's pretty safe raw. Correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> as you can see, I get really wired about, and I'm passionate yeah. about yeah. chili and and what value it has. You know, we got thousands of different cultivars every year here that we've selected. Stuff, all stuff we've created from making crosses through the years, and and, and it's not through gene shooting, not through any three-eyed monster type deal. It's just literally scrambling genes, Martin. So in in breeding, I, I, it, a lot of things have have happened through the years that are really interesting, and I I just wanted to touch on that. That one year we had thirty-six different single plant selections of a chili slash cayenne cross and we were trying to find the hot ones and my farm manager came by and said boss did you see the deer really ate that cayenne block up upon closer looking <laughs> we found that the deer ate all the mild ones and left the hot ones and that's the ones we were looking for they saved us hours and they could smell the capsize and you, you could see where once in a while they bite one but they left that the, the, the hot rose they left completely alone it was very interesting so, so was it that you were looking for the mild ones or you were looking for the hot ones i in this case i was looking for the hot ones because we were trying to increase the heat in a cayenne by the way i have um understood or I, I have encountered hotness mainly in Sichuan food of the Chinese sort. Are they similar or different to what you might be doing? Do you know? I'm not exactly familiar with what you're talking, but definitely the Asian peppers are really, really, really hot as a whole. Thai, uh, Thai and Chinese. Right, and that. right. They, they tend to be more the Chinense family rather than the Anum family, which we, I deal specifically with capsicum Anums. I do deal with a few other families of chili but, or pepper, but typically those real hot ones are, are different families, but they still hold the same nutritional value and there's, there's a lot of good to them. Mutations are always fun to talk about. Let me jump into mutations just a minute, okay? So the average listener out here eats a mutation that they don't realize probably, and that is a navel orange. The navel orange was a mutation captured, I'm not going to give it exact, but I think 1904. I could be wrong, but it was early 1900s. It was easy to capture because trees, you know, that you graph them. They're, they're easy to to move things like that long before we know what we know now in genetics 
grafting was in, in trees and the loser Burbank. And I mean, it just goes on and on with the guys that work with trees and made a huge difference even in the 1800s, probably really even a little earlier than that in Europe and from your end of the world. Yeah. So the point is, is a mutation is, can be really good or it can be really bad to the point of the navel orange. It carried extra sugar. And it carried an easy peel thing. You pull that navel off and the thing was easy to peel, right? So, so, and those are, I like to describe to people gene packages. You know, typically, if I say blue eyes, you think blonde hair. If I say brown eyes, we think brown hair. Those are gene packages. It's easy to explain. Okay, well, fruit and vegetables have gene packages too. Well, our job, and that's what makes our job so fun, Martin. That's why, I, thank you for giving me this opportunity opportunity to share it because it's really fun every kid out there i think if they if they got into any, any interest in plants man genetics is is an amazing field because what we get to do we make crosses then we start we start looking at different gene combinations and and truthfully you martin are a great example of a gene combination package. And now you've got a little grandson that's cuter than heck, and he's another, he's a new combination, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, well that goes on and on and on, we know it. Well, all we're doing is taking, making crosses, selecting from them. Now you'll get a kick out of this. Some of my best material through the years is stuff we found by accident. I love that. I call it a God thing. You know, I mean, it's, it's a power bigger than us, you know. And in Mexico, if you travel Mexico, which I have, studying pepper, you get on into the state of Zacatecas, largest pepper growing state in the world, some 250,000 acres. I mean, it's over a thousand hectares of, of pepper, all different kinds, mainly anchos and that kind. But every little village has a pride in their own selection. And they claim this from it. Or you go 20, 25 kilometers and you find another village and they're really proud of theirs. It's a matter of generation after generation after generation of honing a set, a set gene package a little closer to homozygosity. Does that make sense? Yep. And you know what I'm thinking is the interaction between the plant and the person that's eating it has sort of generational impact. Absolutely. Like I see that, especially with our work with hemp, where, uh, you know, we're talking about the CBD and the endocannabinoids and how the human body uses the uh, cannabidiol, the molecules identical to what that plant grows. We use it for calming our overstimulated nerves and the plant gives it. Right. So there probably is something to do with the uh, molecules in your work each one of them each one of those complex compounds has a specific function and as they change will have an effect on us and onto our progeny because after all if i eat something for my lifetime my children will experience that through my changed being like the sperm that i hand over is affected by everything i've done up to that moment you know, there, there's an interesting study on that, Martin. That's an interesting subject. We are what we eat, right? Yes. I mean, you, you know, you eat enough sugar. My holistic doctor, Dr. Rob Ellsworth in, in Phoenix, or Scottsdale, he had a client that lived to be 114. This client, he asked him one time, what, what do you credit to? Exercise? And no sugar. That was the, I mean, there was many other things, but that was the two main things. No sugar and exercise okay well so what i give a plant and, and this is going to shift us a little bit further and i like this so i take i have taken my farm organic and you know that now this is an important point i need to bracket this one more time there is a trajectory in ed curry's life and i would like to capture that because when you first got working on the farm it was not an organic farm no it's, no i and, and some of the health problems that you and I met over or because of were probably strongly related to the fact that you were not an organic farmer. Not, not almost. Absolutely. I, I carried Dr. Ellsworth 
started doing tests, you know, to see. I, I couldn't eat anything. Dr. Ellsworth helped me figure out, number one, when you mess with your esophagus, you lose some of some of your, uh, your your whole digestive tract you lose you even if it's not taken out it's impaired surgically and 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 so your immune system is forever changed well all of a sudden not all of a sudden but over a three-year period man i couldn't eat nothing and i was eating low carb uh, uh, dr doug Payne here guided me on low carb and i was doing low carb and and i by the way i still believe strongly in 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 you know, I'm not saying cut out all vegetables or anything, but definitely sugars and, and, and you know, you're rich. The simple carbs are bad, you know. Yeah, it's, it's the and, glycemic and, index, we should call it. Like, if you're glycemic there you go. high, you have trouble. All the vegetables are, you know, like lettuce is way down. Green onion and chili is way down on the index. The medium is the broccolis and uh, stuff like that. The high is carrot and parsley and the really high is starch rice potato yeah sweet potato and wheat and i like how you just laid that out because that's very clear it, it's very real now so i was eating low carb but i was sick i felt like i mean i felt terrible for months when i found dr ellsworth he started doing tests on me well we did food allergy tests first well good grief I was allergic to eggs because I was doing low carb. I was eating tons of eggs, but he also did a duck egg taste test. And his thinking was if I was allergic to duck eggs, which I don't eat and have never eaten, then I probably was allergic to chicken eggs as well the whole time. I also learned that I'm allergic to chicken, the regular meat, chicken meat. There was many things I was allergic to. So I set on in a new path of life and and I started finding one by one what I could eat. And when I cut the things out that were bothering me, I started doing better, but I still wasn't doing good enough. Now this is going to come back to the organic farming. So Dr. Rob says, let's do some chemical tests. Let's do some heavy metal tests. Let's see what's in you that way. Holy cow. We found stuff that was outlawed when I was in my early 20s that we had used on the farm. I was carrying it in my fat cells, Martin, that many years. And, and it never showed up. I was a high energy go, go, go guy till 57 years old. At 60 years old, I've, I had the surgery at 57. At 60 years old, I was, I was in terrible shape. Serious enough that I wondered how long I would make it. I got four businesses to run, this breeding, this seed company, and I was dragging. And Dr. Rob, little by little, did all those tests. He found the chemicals. He found many different things I was allergic to. But it would have never showed up if I hadn't killed my immune system, which let everything else come into play. All of a sudden, I was a mess. I'm kind of glad it happened. I mean, I, I wish it hadn't happened, but I'm glad it because I wouldn't be talking to you today about this. Yeah. So I started taking the farm to organic. Now, here's the catch. We were talking about how we you use the cannabinoid thing and how that what's in the plant comes to us and our cell accepts it well the same thing on plant minerals all, all the things you know boron silica i mean you just phosphates nitrogen you go right down the line of what it takes to grow a plant is what it takes to grow a human and if we put it right in the food what we put in the soil is what comes to our food which comes to us you see what i'm saying it's a cycle and if, if our soil is all fried from, from not being healthy, then the product grown from that soil is not healthy and right on down the line. Now, I'm not saying that everything grown that's not organic is bad. I'm not saying that. There's some good products out there. But as a whole, if you've got unhealthy soil, you're not going to have healthy fruit from that plant and you're not going to be healthy yourself from eating. That, yeah. Is that, is it, that's, is that that's clear? Oh yeah, it's very clear. And that's where I was headed with it. And now, of course, the glyphosate, the Roundup, it's uh, the very popular thing with many farmers, especially in the large field, mass crop, wheat and stuff like that growing. 
that thing is certified as a antibiotic actually for the reason that it kills microbes and it kills the microbes in the soil so the it doesn't let the plant extract as much mineralization out of the soil as it would have and it also kills the microbes in the human gut which then means that the human cannot extract the nutrients out of the plant that he eats so we humans of the western technological industrial revolution are running an experiment that's not going very well we're becoming weaker and sicker and uh, in this latest mass hysteria of god knows health related has a lot to do with how we do things at least so i think martin if i can if i can touch on that and i'm always very cautious about this because I, i i'm in this industry i live in this industry um right now I, we're growing organic pima cotton now pima cotton is what you make your finer sheets with it's the long staple um, we had a contract with a big spinner in italy uh, uh, in a mill and we lost it because of this covid thing and we're still growing the crop we'll see what happens I, i'm pretty sure they'll start spinning again and they'll buy it at some point but people ask well what's the advantage of organic cotton well <laughs> i can't exactly tell you but i can tell you we don't have any roundup on it i can i can tell you we have herbicides fungicides fungicides are nasty stuff my friends even at the universities i, I got a good friend at university he's a doctor and he, and he kept warning me be careful with your fungicides they will get you worse than anything you're dealing with and because they're they're killing certain bacteria or if they don't kill them they stop the movement of them well we as humans are <laughs> Our, our gut flora is i don't have to tell you martin it's steaming with bacteria well when we interfere with that process the one thing martin i want to say i want to say it clearly the the things we see the doctors are seeing and i promise you there's a whole sect of doctors out there will be laughing at you and i right now scoffing at what we're saying but there's a whole sect of people that realize it and realize that our industrial revolution of some of these chemicals has took us to a wrong place now has it helped us produce and feed a starving world absolutely that's why i'm cautious about being too hard on it. we don't we don't want to be so hard and arrogant that we leave the third world country starving on the other hand we got to no go ahead if you want to say something i would like to say that there's so much more to uh, agricultural production and wisdom of getting good yield from a field rather than herbicide pesticide and fertilizer there are methods in the organic farming that allow you to raise the uh, yield to a very good level without the use of the so-called industrial revolution stuff you know it's the intellectual revolution that the wisdom that you're sharing here that could feed the uh, third world that you're concerned about okay i'm trying to make sure in my mind that i i cover each deal as we're going because you just you opened a very good door martin the door is is can we produce high yields organically the truth is if you look at the organic yields on a statistic level yes they're less that's why organic products cost more but how long have we been putting all the science this is where john kemp comes in with advancing eco agriculture tell you this is to go to advancing eco agriculture and listen to his podcast he's got hundreds of podcasts on there and 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 they're all about how to build healthy soil and back to if you've got healthy soil you got healthy plants we have actually this is this is, don't leave without this point we have we have a problem disease in chile called phytophthora capsicea 
it just consumes a pepper field during monsoon. We get a lot of rain. People think of Arizona as the desert. What they don't realize is, is in 30 minutes, we can have three inches of rain and water running six inches deep all over a field. Happens every year. When that happens, with unhealthy soil and killing soil bacteria with herbicides, we left. We took all the good bacteria away. Not all of them, but too many of them. There was no soldiers to fight the disease. All of a sudden, in the, in the, in the mid-80s, we started, as, as I <laughs> and Phil Villa were increasing pepper yields, pepper needed more water because we were, we were making, I mean, we were increasing yields 50% at a whack you know that's a lot well then it took a lot more water we added more water then we get these rains we've got the bacteria killed in the soil from our herbicides and boom we've got a perfect culture for terrible disease and loss of this crop so you would lose the whole year somehow the whole field all oh, 2010 2011 consecutively i lost half of my chili crop to this disease Half it represented, a, you know, over a million bucks each time, and 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 what I'm getting it is when we started going organic and working with John, we started going the other way. And guess what? With all the high dollar fungicides, and I'm telling you, they are high dollar. There's a product called Ritamil Gold. The reason we joke, the reason they call it Ritamil Gold is because it's the price of gold. I mean, it's it's crazy expensive. But you know what? All these things are just Band-Aids. What is not a Band-Aid, and get this, listeners, what is not a Band-Aid is healthy soil. I say that with total passion. We are having less disease problem now that we've gone organic than we, than we ever had with all the fungicides. So let me ask, it, I, this, let me ask it this way. As a farmer... Uh, are you more profitable as organic from the lesser input costs or not? Well, farming is a nonprofit organization. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you opened the door for that one, buddy. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah, I don't want to drive a truck through this. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, in, in all honesty, our contracts for the organic because we have processing plants. I, I, I have a cannery. We have a dehydration facility. We brine. We sell a brine product, both orga organic and regular. And, and, and then we freeze. So we do four different food preservation things right here on the farm. In fact, a lot of universities come here to see us because they can see, they can teach the young students, college students, you know, many different things in one spot. And, and I love it that way. And we're not huge, but we do that a little bit of everything. And the, what makes that so fun, you're, you're, to your point, you know, is, is it profitable? When I went organic, it started opening doors. Did it make us rich? No. But did it open some doors for better markets in some areas? Absolutely. But the point is, is, not everywhere. Some of the bigger companies, and I want to make this clear, your Driscoll's, your Dole's, your, you know, if their product says organic, it's organic because they send people there and they make sure it's organic. But many of your vegetables just in a grocery aisle, it might say organic on it. But my broker tells me that, and I won't say his name and I wouldn't give his name because it'd get him in trouble. But all they got to do is pick up the phone to a Mexican order that comes out of wherever in Mexico or whatever vegetable and say, hey, do you have organic? And it's a matter of a change of paperwork. I have and heard this. I have heard this from other places, Ed, where, you know, South America, whatever plants, whatever crop stuff. And it was, you need it organic? Oh, sure. I can make it organic. Exactly. And, and, and that's, to me... I know of a guy that went to jail for fraud in organics. I know of, if, if you look in your deal in Chillicothe, Missouri, a guy committed suicide last year because they caught it, or year before, I guess it was year before last, they caught up with him. His corn was certified organic. Him and five neighbors were working together in this. They were scamming the deal. 
They claim that his corn tainted 25% of all organic corn in the United States. That's how big he had got. He was going to prison. He killed himself the night before. Now, all that's tragic. But, the, but what's more tragic is, to your point and my point, is we want to see people healthy. You spend your life trying to help people. Me too. And, and that's why we've hooked up as friends here, is that our goal is to help people. Well, when you've got fraud going on, you know, you know where fraud is big? Be, be careful buying organic dry beans. That thing is frauded from one end to the other. And, and you know what's done in dry beans? And I want to say this, and I may get shot for it. Some, you know, who knows? Somebody be tracking me down here. But you know what's legal on dry beans? Is to desiccate them with Roundup. That makes no sense to me. My neighbor and I, I have a bean processing plant. And, and my neighbor and I, we won't eat the beans that we know have Roundup on them. Yes. Well, the because same, it, thing it's happened to, same thing happened to wheat, right? Like they are now spraying Roundup on wheat two weeks before harvest, harvest because wheat, as it's dying, just pushes all its energy into the, uh, into the grain and they get higher yield and uniformly dry grain and push the combine on it and blah, blah, blah. And they get and that one. I I don't know that one as well as I know this. Well, I'm here. just saying this is the story from the weeds and why we have yeah. so much crisis in the uh, can't eat wheat. You know, we're maybe less gluten sensitive as we are uh, glyphosate intolerant because the glyphosate in the gut causes havoc. You know, I've wondered that, Martin, myself. In fact, I think you and I have discussed that a little bit. But but the 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 whole point is every, it's about health. And when you take it organic, and if it's truly organic, some people say, "Well, how can it make much difference?" And in fertility, I would argue a little bit on on whether the plant is going to synthesize synthetic nitrogen versus other you know organic type cattle waste chicken waste whatever as nitrogen i doubt the plant i doubt that could be traced but what can be traced is the fungicides the herbicides those things and what and truthfully what what john would tell you is what the synthetic fertilizers do to the bacteria in the soil as well so martin i i i can't thank you enough for letting me have this opportunity i enjoy these kind of things to talk about it and say what's out there and that's why I'm not trying to 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 blow John Kemp into bigger than 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 life, but he deserves it. John is a young man, 32, 33 years old, just had his first little girl, and and John is so neat because he he spends every living minute that he's awake trying to help us as growers understand how to build our soul health and how to build in the end build a healthier fruit so that the consumer gets the best there is I, martin i may be wrong i got a friend in california farming five thousand acres of organic i should say an acquaintance but it's it's being done and just let's go back to my father okay 1952 well he started farming in 50 graduated high school and started farming in oklahoma two years later ended up out here in the desert looking for irrigation so if you look at it that way martin to them when herbicides came along they were fighting weeds there was no organic label there was no market edge so when herbicides came out holy cow we could be profitable we could we could get rid of some weeds and to your point about the great human experiment, nobody knew. And we were told it was safe. I remember sitting in church with my buddy as a little boy with yellow herbicides all over our hands. We didn't wear safety stuff. We didn't know. Today, I carry dildren in my flat cells that was outlawed in 1976. Now, we were told it was okay. 
I'm telling you at 64 years old, I'm still carrying the dang stuff. And, and you've helped me detox and understand detox. I thought detox was a joke. To be honest, Martin, I thought it was a joke until I almost died. Now yeah, I know that I... Yeah, let's, yeah. let's talk about that human side, uh, you know, the farmer genes, geneticist. That's a wonderful story and I'm enthused about it. But let's talk about the person, Ed, who got ill at, at the back end of his 35 years of 40 years of farming, right? Yeah, this is my 49th crop. So seven years ago, 43 years is where I had that surgery and that's where everything started. Or eight, Seven years ago, I've been 40. 50, I don't know, seven, I guess. But anyway, here's the bottom line. You're exactly right. What I learned is going through that, I had to figure out me. I had to, if I was going to live, and I love life. I got a sweet wife, good family, you know, good kids. I have problems like everybody else, you know, and, and, and my wife slaps my hands for certain things, you know, but she did bring me lunch, so we're okay. But, but what I'm saying is, I love life and I wanted to live. And, and, and from a genetic standpoint, Martin, I got to live another 50 years to finish my, my high nutrition chili. You know, I don't want to quit. And people talk about retirement. You know what sounds like hell to me is to sell out and buy a house in a cul-de-sac somewhere. Holy cow, that'd be as close to hell on earth as you could be. I want to be out here on this farm figuring out these things. And, and so health meant everything to me. So as I started deteriorating, thank goodness I found Dr. Rob. He is also, by the way, who told me to go get a sauna. And when I got the sauna, they give me that gift for you. And that's how I met you, see? And so, so through this process, I started understanding myself. That's why I've had in-depth talks with you. What does, what does, what? What's happening? Well, then along comes John Kemp in my life several years ago. And the same thing, I started, and then the two started merging. Hold it. What's healthy for the soil is healthy for Ed. And it's for you too and for our listeners. So if it's healthy, it's healthy all the way through. Now I'm not saying every product sold out there by Bayer, Monsanto, or, or, or Syngenta, or whoever is bad. I'm not saying it is. But what yeah, I am okay, saying but is you that, can't tell me they're good, so just leave it alone. <laughs> well, I like to take this avenue because I don't like to be so radical that I just rule everything out. But what I do rule in is help. And help if that soil is healthy. And it takes this human experiment. When I talked about my dad in 1952, and he's still alive. Now look at where our farm's gone. We went from he was basically farming organic. Didn't know it, but that's what it was. Using chicken. It was organic. called farming. It was just called farming. Then in came the fertilizers, the, 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 you know, everything that was, you know, started being made synthetically, herbicides, fertilizers, all that. And it came and it, it made it more profitable. And we thought we were doing good because we were feeding a hungry world. So then we come and then all of a sudden people get sick. And I want to say this before I get it, Martin, because I don't want to forget this. A lot of our problems with our hormones in our bodies. You talk about our body. I want to say this in total clarity. Listen to me clearly, audience. Some of the problems we have with testosterone, estrogen, any hormone comes back to some fungicide, herbicide, some product back here that we were told was safe that now we know in incremental values does something. Now, legally, we don't know it enough to prove it to shut them down. We can't do it. They're having trouble shutting them down on the roundup. They, they can't quite prove it. It's the carrier. If you talk to John Kemp, he will tell you it's the carrier is the problem. It's not the salts. It's the carrier. But, but nevertheless, there's not enough to prove it. But yet, there's enough problems going on. If you look at the trends, what's happening? Well, we're hormonally messed up. And we're getting more cancers. We're getting all these things because things are out of balance. Back to healthy soil, healthy life. You know, they used to say, happy wife, happy life. Healthy soil, healthy, happy, happy life. Happy wife, too. <laughs> so you get where I'm going? Oh, yeah. So uh, as far as uh, 
you and I go, you know, like I, I certainly make a living when people start coming to us for the advice that we offer and for the products we offer. And I, I would like to, um, you know, lean on you and your credibility to sort of say, hey, uh, here's how I found you to be different from the rest of what I've run into. Well, Martin, that's easy. What you offer is a voice behind the product. You offer an explanation. So many times you go to buy a product, you read a little review on the internet or on the back of the bottle or whatever, and you make a very uneducated decision. Listen, audience, Martin spends hours and hours and hours studying his products. When how many I, I've tried several new things you brought. I don't even know how, how many. But I'll say, Martin, what you got new? He said, Well, you know, I'm studying this or I'm studying that. The C60. You know, you told me in the I can tell you I was driving between Bisbee, Arizona, and Sur Vista when you told me that on the phone. And and th the point is, Martin, you offer consultation, wisdom, understanding the product, uh, understanding a person's whole needs. What, what are they struggling with hormonally? That's to me the value that life enthusiast Martin offers to us. So absolutely, I didn't get on here to just, you know, be an advertisement, but you know what, Martin, I'm glad you asked that because you have helped me immensely. And it's, it's that being able to pick up the phone and call you. To me, the important phrase is, you're a voice to the product. Right. Well, you know, for me, in a way of helping people understand why it's better to talk to us, the small business with a real customer service and customer support, as opposed to getting 20% off on iHerb, is why would they, right? Yeah. Well, see, to me, you know. I mean, I pick up the phone, and if you tell me you need an extra 10% to stay in business, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it to you because I want you there. It, the, 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 it's, it's crazy. If, if, we're, if we're looking to cut every penny, yeah, go over. I, I didn't even know about iHerb, but go to iHerb. But if you really want to understand your body and have somebody help you, then it's you, Mark. Yeah, well, you know, for me, it's that sort of same thing as uh, buying organic, right? Yep, there's a little extra cost. And it comes with safe, yeah, well said. Or useful or with benefit. Like I have oftentimes people come to me and say, oh, I can buy such and such for $30 over there. And why is yours 60? And my point oftentimes is because that 30 dollar item is going to be 30 percent 30 dollars wasted like you get nothing because yep. it's dead or because it's yeah. whatever yeah. right that that's well said even down to you know i'm in small town america i mean there's at the most a couple thousand people in a in a 15 mile radius here and 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 well tucson's an hour and 20 minutes away but the point is is we watched our small towns die because of Walmarts. And originally Walmart was pro USA. After Sam Walton died, it became pro China. And, 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 and that's a whole different subject. But the bottom line is you can go buy cheap or I try to take care of my local business because I need them. When I need to run by a park, I can go down here two miles and buy a park from Willie. I want to do that. I don't want him to starve out, neither do I want you to starve out. I want the guy that's putting energy into helping me understand what my problem is, whether it's a mechanic or you for my body. Right. As, as you can tell, Martin, I, I'm pretty passionate about this whole subject. I mean, we've, mm -hmm. we've jumped around a lot, and I hope I give you enough thread to – pull through the ideas of what we discussed. Well, you know, the, my summary of this whole thing would be is people understand that there are antecedents. What happens before something else has a consequence. Like when you Both. do, when you do, well, the inputs will affect the outputs. So when yeah. you, when you treat your soil right, you will have good products or good produce. 
coming off of it. When you put good things into the body, you will probably get better outcomes health-wise than, than otherwise. You know what hasn't been said, Martin, and it needs said? You and I make our living with our minds, thinking. I've got to understand genetics really well to keep improving. Now, if we don't eat right and we're not, we can't think right, and, and we've got to be able to think right to produce. And, 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 and that's, that's, the, that's the whole key is, is thinking. I, I mean, I've never done pot, I've never drank, I've never done any of that because I want my mind, <laughs> I struggle with it being sharp as it is. And I want it sharp. I, you know, the, I just recently had two hip surgeries. I want my surgeon to be thinking good when, when they, I want the anesthesiologist to think right. I want the surgeon to think right. And the, bi, the guy or the gal buying from you wants you to think right. And our mind and how that works is all, you know, there's an old saying, I got a gut feeling. One thing I've learned through this, and you've, you've helped teach me this, our gut is our thinking. And, and the average person doesn't see that. I can tell you when I was at my worst and my gut was a mess and I was healing after that surgery, holy cow, I struggled to think. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, I struggled to think anytime, but, but you know what I'm saying? It wasn't clear. I want to be clear. I believe our soul is our mind. Our spirit is our mind. If we feed our bodies good, we take care of our spirit and soul. That's a whole different subject, but I think it's all tied together. Right on. So, Ed, can people buy your organic chili relleno? Is that how you pronounced it? Relleno. <laughs> well, you know, right now we don't really per se sell organic fresh product. We do sell some products here that we process that uh, right now we process uh, for a company, 505 Western. Uh, we do some for them. We do some for Santa Cruz Chili uh, here in Arizona, a long time Arizona company. It's not, their product's not necessarily certified organic, but we are working to get an organic, certified organic hot sauce. I, doggone, I got a bottle here somewhere with a company out of Oregon, Barn Height Products that is completely certified organic they got some that is so and, and we furnish grown the base in our fields. For that. yes the product the base products grown with us yeah. Yeah. yeah so some so you said this santa cruz santa cruz chili products here in arizona they can look it up on the web uh and and it's not certified organic but they come from organic fields for the most part, not completely. Is there a website where I could go and buy it if I wanted to order? Yes, on Santa Cruz, you can go to santacruz.com and, and look it up and, and you can order salsas and stuff. Is it and just santacruz.com? Uh-huh, S-A-N-T-A wow. Cruz, I believe. I think that's, I think I'm telling you right. You'll find it. Look up Santa Cruz, uh, Amato, Arizona, and you'll find it. And that's not my company. That's my, my friend's company. Uh, I've got a cam right in front of me. I don't know. If you can see Beautiful. that. Can you yeah, see that later? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, right there. Yeah, and then and then here's a jar. Uh, this is some products. We don't have our own label on anything, yeah. but these are good people. They do a good job. I promise you, it's not certified organic, but much of the product in there is because it comes right out of our field. But anyway. We actually don't have our own label. We're working on it. Someday, that's one of my goals, Martin. Okay. Someday have my own label. There, there will be a chili by curry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. But at, lastly, I wanted to mention that, that, that uh, in 2018 in Naples, Florida, I was elected chairman of the International Pepper Conference. And it's a great honor. And uh, there's people way smarter than me. Uh, I. I'm a high school degree and it's a, it's a scientific organization. What I wanted to say is we had to cancel that that, that conference. It was going to be here at the farm and then at the university of Marriott in Tucson, Arizona on September 28th, 9th and 30th. So because of COVID we've moved it to uh, to 2021, September 27th, 28th and 29th. And uh, uh, there's a fee to it and stuff, but if somebody's highly interested, in capsicum genetics, it's all docs. It's you're going to find a lot of good information, and you can come to the farm and learn. And I, I kind of wanted to 
just put that in there that 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 we would we would enjoy anybody that wants to come uh, uh, to 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 that. And it, again, it'll be in 2021. But it's been a real honor to be elected to that position. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it's wonderful that that they finally recognize that practical wisdom has a real value. But thank you for this time, Martin. It's been fun. I I I, I enjoyed. I mean, you just gave me a lot of fun. I appreciate it. I really salute you for the journey and for the, you know, the, the honest inquisitiveness that, that you bring to everything. Like I know every one of our conversations is always like, what does this mean? And, and what's, and what's the question behind the question? Yeah. Yeah. You used a word while ago. I never heard about trying to teach people interceding. What was oh, that ante Antecedent, that's, that's just a uh, Latin, you know, ante as in before. Antecedent means yeah. something that preceded something else. Yeah, and, and I like that because that's what we're missing. And you know what's weird? When you, Martin, I, my granny died in 1997. She lacked 75 days being 100. And she lived by herself till 99 and a half. Things she would she would joke and say I'm I'm taking food to the old people, and it was comical. She nobody was as old as she was. Man, I lost you, and there you are. Yeah, know, yeah, she, yeah no, nobody was old as she was. But when you look at what she ate, it didn't have all this crap. She grew on gardens. She raised turkeys and sold them to people at Christmas time and Thanksgiving, and they were healthy animals. They weren't fed a bunch of stuff. They were fed her homegrown corn and stuff that her husband raised, my grandfather, and, and, and they lived to be old. And they lived healthy, good thinking minds. And, and, and you look at today, and we don't see that so much. No, the wear, the wear is faster because we, we damage our resilience quicker. Yeah. I actually see it that with every succeeding generation, the resilience is less because the toxic burden is greater. That's yeah. Weird. Yeah, that toxic burden is real. It's a real deal. It's, and so I hope when I said, I, I didn't hurt you by saying anything, saying, well, maybe not all their products are bad. Uh, you know, I, well, I, I don't, don't know. I don't care how you speak of them. It's just that I have no uh, respect left for the companies that introduce products into the market that they know have negative consequences, but hide yeah. those negative consequences because it would hurt their bottom line. Yeah. They have, I, been, I, caught, they have been caught lying and they, um, huh, you know, dealing with lawyers, the, there, there's a difference between the legal process and justice. And uh, yeah, that's well what's said. legal is not necessarily what's moral. And uh, I stand on the, uh, I wish to live a more moral stuff, moral yeah. life. Oh, me too. I I'm mean, not, I'm not innocent. You know, I have. Uh, no, well, none of us are, but, but yeah, whatever, but, but, I but, try. but your heart's right. It's attitude. It's attitude. And, you know, one of the best examples I ever knew of that is several years ago, a whole bunch of people got poisoned by peanut butter. Remember that? I and, don't. And but there was a big fiasco in the peanut deal. And, and the CEO of a large peanut butter company hid a problem. Now, that is, that's the kind of stuff. And I know I have these companies. And boy, there's times you don't want to, you know, it, it, it's hard, but you know what? you got to stop and realize what's important, money or taking care of people. And that peanut fiasco, it hurt a lot of agriculture. And, and now that tightened up the law so much. If I make an innocent mistake out here under my food safety authority, and I have, I, I've been to school, I got an authority for product. Processing food. If I make a mistake, I can go to jail, Martin. And in a way, that's awfully stiff. In another way, it's right. 
Yeah. We need and and see the problem is those big companies that produce those the products that they you know they don't stand behind or they don't really do the research. You know, there's a lot of what ifs there. You know. Well, yeah, that's the, the one part is that we don't research it because we don't want to know. But the other part is we have researched it. We do know, but we don't want you to know. Right. Right. Like, like recently when the uh, PFOA's affair with DuPont came to light for 30 years, they've been relying about Teflon and the mess they've left behind. Oh. They, I didn't know they knew that. all along. They knew all along. Yeah. And it's the kind of stuff that affects planet earth for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So um, on that cheerful note, I would like to remind everyone that organic is good and Ed Curry is an organic farmer. And if you have questions and comments, write to us. And if you would like to bring Ed back, he, his well is deep. He can talk on many subjects. Ed, I honor you and I thank you for the time. Yeah, I honor you as well, Martin. And thank you. I, I'm honored to be a part of this. It's really fun. Awesome. Thank you. This is Life Enthusiast. We restore vitality to you and to the planet. Thank you for being with us today.